Hi, my name is Luke O'Neill. I'm art editor of Computer Arts Collection, and I'm going to run you through five checks that I always make before sending a job to print. Now, unlike digital, print can be quite unforgiving if mistakes are made. You can be fined, for example, if uh, new plates have to be made or if you miss your print slot. So it's always a good idea to check and double check documents before sending them, especially with magazine covers where it's the, it's the first thing you see and if mistakes are there, then, well, they'll be noticed. And there's nothing worse than getting a job back from printers that you're not 100% happy with. So let's start with the basics. Images, for example. It kind of goes without saying that they should be CMYK and roughly 300 dpi. So let's check this one. You can check the percentage size of the image up here, which says 63%. If we hold Alt and double click it to open it in Photoshop, you just check. Yep, it's at 300 dpi. Colour mode CMYK. And also check the colour profile because when you supplied artwork or photos, they may use a different profile which you'll need to change. For us, it's US web coated, but your printer may have a different profile that they use, which you can select from here. As a rule of thumb, as well, once in InDesign, you can actually take them bigger than 100%. So we just duplicate this. Use a direct selection tool, and up here you can go roughly as big as 120%, which is about that size. Now, this is a guideline, really. I mean, it's always a good idea once the PDF's back to just double check it, view the PDF at 300% just to make sure that there's no pixelation occurring. Because with some images, they're better quality than others, and DPI, mm, it's not always exact, so just use your eye, really. So moving on to swatches, we open the swatch panel there, F5. Now in design, even if you have um, unused swatches in there, or colours, so for example here, Pantones, I've got a number in here that I haven't actually used, and an RGB colour here. Now although they're not actually used in the document here, it can cause problems when it gets to printers, because it'll still flag up with these extra Pantones in there. You may get charged by their repro department for removing them. So a quick way to just remove them, go to select all unused and drag them to the trash. And you can view in your separations here then, turn separations on, exactly what you're using. Flatten and preview is also a good one to always check in here. Now I've deliberately made a mistake here. Outline text, if we go down to here, you can see that it flags up red. So if we zoom in, quick way to rectify that is just to move the type onto another layer. And then if we try that again, it's solved. Now the thing with outline text is um, it can show up raggedy, so you get some text which is live text, some text which is outline, which always appears a little thicker, and it's not that nice, really. So we don't want any of that on there. Now, another thing to bear in mind is your blacks when sending to print. So we go back into separations panel, put separations on. You can see here, with the main headline, the Computer Arts logo, I've used a four-colour black, which is absolutely fine. But for small text, you just want to use a 100% black, so you don't get any registration issues. But you can see here, where there's this blue Pantone, it's not knocking out of it. So what will happen there is it will overprint over the top of that Pantone. Now normally inside a magazine or publication, we'd always have it set to overprint, because we don't want it to knock out, because there could be registration issues, and you could have like little white lines around the black text. But because this is a cover, we want it to be spot on, and they can, well, they'll spend extra time getting the registration right. And if we do just leave it at overprint, that black there will print over the top of that Pantone and could look a little bit washed out. So to rectify that, simply go into Preferences, Appearance of Black, turn overprint off. Now we'll go back into Separations, turn the black off. You'll notice it's knocking out of the Pantone there down here as well and on the back and you'll notice everything else knocks out as well the silver there 
and the other Pantones, so that's absolutely fine. And one final thing, when using special finishes, you always have to produce um, an extra black pay plate. So with uh, this cover, we have quite a simple UV, which we use um, UV varnish. We just varnish this central image here. Now a good idea, when you get the PDFs back, is to just check that they line up perfectly. So here I've got a new document. If I go to links, drop the cover in. It doesn't matter what size the document is here. Drag that in. Now if I just duplicate that by doing step and repeat, drop our UV plate on top, turn the opacity down slightly, we can just check that everything lines up perfectly, because we don't want any slippage at print. There's also another special finish on this one, so if we duplicate that, we have sort of a rough stock which is a UV2, again put that on top, reduce that opacity, turn it up slightly. You can just make sure that everything lines up perfectly. Now some of these may seem like common sense, but I mean it's always good to just check, double check and check again when sending a file to print because problems do happen. I mean, some things are out of your hand, but as long as you know you've done everything you can at your end, then you're happy.